let's move on to the other horrific news or some of the other horrific news that we learned yesterday as well. Go ahead and put this up on the screen. So as I alluded to before, we now know that seven uh, aid workers for Jose Andres' organization called World Central Kitchen were killed. Um, the Israeli military bombed three cars that were that belonged to these foreign nationals. Um, we now know that one of the individuals who was killed is a dual is a American Canadian citizen, but a number of other foreign nationals involved here as well as one Palestinian. Um, Jose Andres himself put on a statement saying, today World Central Kitchen lost several of our sisters and brothers in an IDF airstrike in Gaza. I'm heartbroken and grieving for their families and friends and our whole WCK family. These are people, angels. I served alongside in Ukraine, Gaza, Turkey, Morocco, Bahamas, Indonesia. They are not faceless. They are not nameless. The Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing. It needs to stop restricting humanitarian aid, stop killing civilians and aid workers, stop using food as a weapon. No more innocent lives lost. Peace starts with our shared humanity, and it needs to start now. Um, you can see that message up on the screen from Jose Andres. And of course, the context here is, number one, a policy of collective punishment and starvation, which has been ongoing since post-October 7th. You now have uh, acute levels of food insecurity where people, and especially children and babies, are literally starving to death. You have anarchy breaking out because of the desperate circumstances, especially in northern Gaza. And now, amidst that backdrop, you have seven aid workers who are there specifically to try to feed hungry people who are targeted and killed by the IDF. Sagar, I know they're expressing their quote unquote sorrow over the incident, claiming they're gonna investigate it. But let's be really clear here. These aid workers were in a de-conflicted zone. They had done everything, followed standard protocol to make sure they were not targeted, that they would be safe while they were conducting aid activities, trying to feed starving people and they were targeted and killed anyway. In a marked car, there is no excuse for this. And it fits a pattern of aid workers being killed and slaughtered in the Gaza Strip by the IDF in the context of this conflict. Yeah, we have a statement here this morning just breaking from Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, saying that the killing of the aid workers, quote, was mm -hmm. unintended and is a tragic incident. One of the things, though, is that uh, it definitely strains a little bit of credulity is for the pictures that are coming out of the strike. For those of us who cover the war on terror, the image in front of us is not in any way surprising. It's the exact telltale sign of a precision guided munition that's been going through, is fired easily um, by a drone. In some cases, actually, there's been seen some speculation by munitions and military experts. It may have even been uh, the telltale, the bladed Hellfire missile. I know that that's one that uh, the U.S. has used in the past because it's one that can carry directly through um, a car and cr create the whole just exactly like what you see, which kills everybody inside, but limits the amount of collateral damage then on the outside. So then there's the question of uh, where did they get such munition? Why are we using this on an aid convoy? And presumably, you know, given the fact that the top of the car literally has the picture of food that's on top of it, clearly branded with the name, then why was it targeted in the first place? And uh, the, I mean, I think it does also tell you a lot that the Israelis themselves have basically given no explanation as to how something like this can happen. They just say it's an unintended strike and that um, they, you know, express their condolences uh, for the dead. This is, uh, you know, just another number added to the hundreds of aid workers who have already been killed by, uh, is by the IDF. And so you can't look at the numbers and just assume, oh, well, this is all an accident. And let's think about the fallout here because now World Central Kitchen, they've suspended operations in the Gaza Strip. They've been actually one of the more effective operations on the ground. This is their first time working in Gaza, but they've worked in many other difficult regions around the world. Um, they had been quite bold in their approach and reportedly pretty effective. So this is the worst thing that could possibly happen in terms of starving Palestinians. Yet another aid organization cut off at the knees, just like UNRWA has been as well. So um, the consequences here are incredibly dire. And it's so, 
It is so indescribable, the number of atrocities that have been committed day after day. And you just look at this and you say, well, how are they so brazen? The, the killing an American aid worker, potentially dragging us into World War III with Iran. You know, this massacre at the hospital, the flower massacre, the targeting of hospitals and mosques and churches and refugee camps with 2,000 pound bunker buster bombs. And you look at it and it's very clear. It's because they've gotten away with all of it. Is there any expectation that even though they just bombed one of our citizens, that there will be any consequences for that? No, absolutely not. Do you think that even as they just struck the Iranian embassy in Damascus, potentially dragging us into a much broader and even more dangerous conflict, do you think there will be any consequences for that? No. So when you want, well, why do they do these things and how do they, well, it's because they can, because they've been testing and trial balloon. What can we get away with? What can we get, can we get away with targeting starving civilians who are trying to obtain aid off a truck? Yes, we can. Can we get away with targeting a hospital? Yes, we can. Okay, we're going to target basically every hospital in the entire Gaza Strip and destroy the entire health infrastructure. Can we get away with targeting an embassy in a foreign country. Yes, we can. Can we get away with targeting foreign nationals who are aid workers? And we already all know the answer. I also don't want to lose sight of the fact that these were extraordinary human beings who decided, who signed up to be in this dangerous, brutal conflict zone. Um, we wanted to share with you a, a portion of a video of two of the individuals who were killed by the Israelis in this strike and the work that they were doing there on the ground. Let's take a look. Hey, this is Zomi and Chef Olivier. We're at the Deer of a Love Kitchen um, and we've got the Mise en Place. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about it, Chef Ali. This is the Mise en Place to make the, to cook the rice. So we have uh, all the spices to boil the water, to be ready for uh, the, the boiling water inside the, the rice. This is the steam plant with oil, the steam fried onions. Uh, we add the spices and after we uh, steam fry the rice, we add the water. The water is aromatized with this, with this, spice, with this mix of spices. There is the black lemon, there is some chili, there is uh, seven mix of spices, bay leaves, salt. Uh, pepper and tomato paste. Indeed, so uh, this is the, the beautiful fragrant aromatic rice that will be served today from Jirabala Kitchen. Thank you. Some of humanity's finest right there, Zomi and Chef Ali. That was the final video that they produced there. You can see, you know, preparing food for starving Gazans and now Sagar, they're gone. Yeah, tragic. I mean, uh, beyond tragic, honestly. Just aid workers, it, look, we'll see uh, what the... Uh, what the official reaction is from their governments, but I'm not gonna hold my breath, especially, I mean, with the American, you know, especially for me, I'm like, you kill one of our own citizens in a strike that you say is unintended. You gotta release a lot of data here on exactly how exactly this went down. But the thing is, Crystal, we know they won't do that because that would expose the same level of anger and internal, I mean, at a certain point, we already know, in terms of the indiscriminate, the lack of tactics, what you've covered it too in the past, the AI use in some cases, the way that people are just killed willy-nilly. That's an, another interesting question. Did a human even make a decision here or do they just program something in here and says if it's a moving car in X, Y, and Z area, just blow the shit out of it. That's right. Uh, and you know that, and if so, you better answer a lot of questions as to why I don't feel in any way confident that our consular, you know, officials or State Department will in any way do something. Like no, that. and that's what we, makes me really upset. We know what their response is going to be, Matt Miller and these other people. Oh well, it, Israel says they're mm -hmm. investigating. We'll right. wait for the results of that investigation. And guess what? You never hear the results of that investigation. You never hear about it again, unless you know somebody like Ryan or another journalist asks about it. To which they just point to, you know, oh well, we're upset about that, and they're investigating, and we'll wait to see. So we know exactly where this is ultimately going to go, and you know. The Israeli military, the IDF, they are famously very technically advanced, right? They have all the technology in the world. Um, and yet we have consistently seen aid workers, medical workers, ambulances. Remember the little girl who was trapped in a car with her dead family members begging for help? The Red Crescent sends out medics in an ambulance, deconflicted with the Israelis in an attempt to save her and everyone involved targeted and killed. Like at a certain point, we can't be so naive 
as to think these are all just unfortunate accidents that the Israelis are truly, really profoundly sorry about. Because again, this helps to further their goal of inflicting pain and suffering on the Palestinian people, specifically through the tool of starvation as a weapon of war. So the fact that this aid organization has now had to pause their operations and are no longer feeding the people of Gaza who are starving to death is a devastating, devastating blow. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.